What's up guys, Rip here and today I'm going to be talking to you about the Keymander by Iogear. But a little bit about myself first. See, I grew up playing first person shooter games on PC. So I always played them with the mouse and the keyboard. So I played Doom, Duke Nukem 3D, the Quake series, Unreal Tournament, Half-Life, Counter-Strike, you name it, I played it. But I always played it on a PC with the mouse and the keyboard. So when Halo started coming out, I really wanted to get into it, but I couldn't get used to the analog sticks. So whenever I played it, I felt like, God, it could be so much better at this, but the analog sticks are always holding me back. Now, of course, I play fighting games a lot more, and a lot of my friends play fighting games as well, and we always play it on console. So when these friends of mine play shooter games, they still play it on console, and I still feel handicapped playing it. So that's where this product comes in. This is the Keymander by IOGear, and basically allows you to use your PC, mouse, and keyboard while playing these shooter games on your consoles. And this product, although when it first came out, it was only compatible with the PS3, and this one here shows you they updated the firmware for the Xbox 360 and Xbox One. They've actually updated again so it also works on the PS4. So it basically works on all four major consoles, PS3, PS4, Xbox 360, and the Xbox One. So let's go ahead and take a look at the hardware. All right, so when you open up the box, this is what you get. You get the Keymander box itself, you get a disc with the software for it, but I really recommend that you go online and get the latest software. Come to the Quick Start Guide, it has some quick tips for you as well as some other registration stuff. And you get two USB cables, which are going to come in really handy. Now let's go ahead and look at the connection of the Keymander itself. Alright, so the Keymander unit itself is fairly small. On this side back here, you're going to see these. this is where you plug in all of your peripherals. So here is the gamepad port, uh, where you're going to plug in the whatever gamepad for whatever console you're using. Uh, this is where you're going to plug in the keyboard and mouse that you're going to plug into it as well. On the other side here, this is the ports where you're going to plug in your USB cables for the systems that you're using it. So when you want to plug it to your PC to configure it, you plug into the PC port there. There's a power port as well, which you're going to want to plug into when you use it with the PC to configure it. And of course, when you want to plug it into your game system itself, you got to plug it in there. So basically, at all times, you're going to be having it plugged into this port here for your game unit, which to the other end is going to go to your game console. Um, and then on the other side, of course, you'll have the mouse, keyboard, and the gamepad plugged in. That's going to be the typical use case scenario. Let's talk about the software. Before you get to using the Keymander, you have to set it up through its software. Now, it allows you to set up groups and profiles for your consoles, and you can also switch to these profiles by hitting the associated hotkeys on the keyboard. So basically, once you originally set it up, you can actually never plug it into your PC again, and just using the hotkeys, swap between your Xbox 360 and your PS3, to your PS4, to your Xbox One, or whatever, just by hitting the hotkeys on the keyboard itself. Now, in the software itself, there are a ton of settings in here to fine tune the device. However, the user guides and the interface don't always give you the best instruction to sort through it all. For some sliders in the software, it's unclear what moving it one way or another is actually going to do. So figuring this out is no simple task. Uh, to help anyone out there with the device, here are the settings that I used that gave me the best results. When going to the advanced sections right here, you'll see the acceleration curves. And the older versions of the software actually allowed you to import and export these curves, but the current version does not. I was told that this would be coming in a later software update though. Alright, so how does this device actually perform? When I first got the device, I found it very disorienting. Sometimes when I would move my mouse, it wouldn't really pick it up. And then sometimes when it was picking it up, it would be so jittery that it started giving me headaches. So I realized that, you know, there's no way they would have released the device in this state. So I decided to contact IRVR directly and I spoke to some of their techs. After a little bit more tinkering with the software itself, I found the one software setting that really changed everything around for me, and that was the dead zone setting. And now in this dead zone setting, it defaults to auto, but I ended up changing it, I think, to circle. And once I changed the setting, all the jitter was gone, no more headaches. It was practically perfect. After that, I just had to tweak my sensitivity in the game. I set it to maximum and just I'll set the other sensitivity for the Keymander itself and as well as the aim down the sight sensitivity and all of a sudden it became very very usable and from then on it was pretty much good to go. The only other setting I had to check was the DPI setting for my mouse. Now I use a Cyborg RAT7 mouse and I had to look it up online and I saw that the default DPI was 3200, put that into the software and once I had that setting plus the dead zone setting, it was practically flawless. At that point I actually turned off the acceleration curves because setting the individual values was too much of a burden uh, and still I had really no problems. But once the software gets updated and I'm able to set these acceleration curves um, by importing and exporting, I think it's going to be even better. So does the device have lag? I couldn't really think of a way to test this, so this is going to be a little bit subjective. The keyboard inputs felt spot on to me. So that to me indicates that the, whatever lag may be in the device is pretty much negligible. I asked some of my friends to try out the device and they thought that there may have been some mouse lag in it, 
but I don't think it's actually the lag that they were feeling. I think it's the nature of the device emulating the analog sticks with your mouse. So basically what I'm trying to say is that you don't get the actual one-to-one -one feel um, that you would in a PC, so as you move your mouse, it still has to accommodate for these analog sticks. So sometimes you move it a little bit as opposed to a complete flick. Uh, it's gonna have to translate that, you know, as, from a mouse perspective. And that's, I think, where they're starting to feel like there may be lag. Um, but bottom line, I don't think that there's really any lag with this device. You know, there might be a tiny bit, but I think that's gonna be attributed more to the emulation than anything else. But when it comes to gaming and whether you, it, if it's gonna affect your gaming, I think that if you're playing on a big screen TV, odds are the TV has more lag than this device does. So is it cheating? I know a lot of people out there are gonna be like, that is definitely cheating. You can't use a mouse and a keyboard against people using analog sticks. I don't think so. And when I first heard of these devices, I thought that it was going to be cheating. But realistically, what it's doing is actually emulating the analog sticks on the controller. So in some games, say you move the analog sticks slowly for your movement, and you can slowly creep around corners or something. With the key mender, you can't do that. Your keyboard is either on or off, left, right, forward, and back. And that's all you've got. Uh, similarly, when you're aiming with the mouse, Analog sticks, they have two, two, two ways of working basically. You either have your slow acceleration basically to aim slowly, or when you flick it quickly, it tries to move around very quickly. And so that's what the acceleration curves are for with the mouse. And that's why when you swing your mouse across very quickly, it actually has to try to emulate that into analog stick movements, which doesn't really give you that one-to-one -one feel that you would expect from a PC. So that's why I don't think this is necessarily cheating. All right, so let's talk about the expected use of this device. Basically, if you're a PC gamer, you're going to need to use a mouse and a keyboard, obviously. But since you're a PC gamer, you probably have a mouse and a keyboard that you really like. Now, when you're going to configure the software, you're going to have to have it plugged into your PC. But when you go, say your console's in another room, you're going to have to unplug your mouse and keyboard and take it with you to that other room. So obviously the best way to use this device is to have a separate mouse and keyboard that you can always plug into it if your consoles are in another room. For customizing the software directly to work with all of these consoles though, you're really going to want to have it all plugged in at the same time. And there's a mode on here that they call the laptop mode, which is what I pretty much use exclusively when using the device. In my setup at home, I've got my desktop PC and my consoles really close to one another actually. And what the laptop mode allows you to do is hit the F12 key on your keyboard to swap your desktop's keyboard and mouse from the PC to the consoles. Hit F12 again, and it comes right back to the PC. So for me, that's was the ideal way to go, and it helps a ton when customizing the software because you don't have to unplug the keyboard and mouse basically ever. You know, if you're unplugging from your PC, you went over to your console, you plugged in, you realize, oh, I got to change some settings here. You have to unplug and bring them back, change some more settings, etc. And that's obviously a huge hassle. But with the laptop mode, I was able to circumvent all of that. And the laptop mode itself is definitely the way to go if your consoles and PC are side by side. Overall, this device works fantastic, but it requires that you set it up correctly, and the instructions to do so are not clear, and the default dead zone settings lead to absolutely terrible results. Now, if you're looking to, if you're looking for exact PC performance, you're definitely going to be a little bit disappointed here, because because of the emulation to get the mouse to feel like analog sticks, it's going to feel a little bit different. Now, the price tag is $100, but you can find it on sale for about $80 at both Amazon and Newegg. So I'm gonna give this device a four out of five stars. Let's go ahead and talk about some of the pros and cons here though. For the pro side, you know, it works fantastic when it's working. It works for all four major consoles, you know, the PS3, the PS4, the Xbox 360, and the Xbox One. The laptop mode is great. One of the features I didn't talk about is the keyboard mode, which by hitting F9 allows you to use your keyboard as a keyboard so you can type messages to your friends faster. Definitely another pro as well. Cons though, of course, the default dead zone setting is absolutely terrible. So a lot of the default settings are things you're going to have to look into and figure out. And the other major con is that the acceleration curves currently, um, they do not allow you to import and export it. They said it's going to be in a future software update though, so hopefully that is addressed in the future. All right, so just a few closing thoughts before I go. If you guys go to Newegg or Amazon to try and purchase this device, you're going to see other reviews there. And you're going to see a lot of them are like one star reviews. And you're going to think, why the hell did Rip give this a four star review? And realistically, if you look at these reviews, you can see a lot of them complain about the jitter. And I myself had that exact same problem until I found that dead zone and DPI setting. And if I had not found those settings and hadn't set them correctly, I would have agreed and I also would have rated this device a one out of five. But, you know, once I found those settings, as you can see from all the footage in this video, you know, there is practically no jitter. So, 
you know, that's really not an issue for me and I can actually use this device now, which is why I'm giving it a 4 out of 5 stars. One other hiccup I did encounter though while using the device, I was playing on the PlayStation 4 and you know, there is a mic port now at the bottom here and while I had this plugged into the Keymander, the mic port actually did not register. So I actually had to plug in the controller directly into the PlayStation 4 to get the mic functionality back from the controller. So that's one hiccup and if they're aware of it, you know, they'll probably address it in the future as well. Uh, that's all for this review guys. You guys can of course follow Twitch, Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook.com slash Level Up Your Game. And I will see you guys next time.